Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome to another Supreme Commander Epic. That's right. Remember, guys, these ones can run a little long, so leave extra time. But the main criteria, of course, is that we get to see all the goodies. All the toys come out in the big games. That's what we like to see. First of all, I would like a moment of praise. Oh, I'd like lots of praise, but a moment of praise will suffice in relation to last week's cast. Not because it was any good, but because I united humanity for the first time ever. It was universally banned as terrible replay selection. I didn't think it was too bad, personally. I thought it was quite good. Obviously, others wouldn't have selected it. But I admit it wasn't the best, but it made an important point. And that is, I still firmly believed, I mentioned it briefly last week, something needs to be done about support commander balance there should not be an i win button in fa i'm not saying it's an i win button of, like in its literal sense of course it there are counters and they're weak against air and all of that gubbins i know that but the fact that you can transfer a huge proportion of your economy into a mobile combat form so that if you lose territory it barely matters anymore you've still got all of that generated capacity uh, in mobile tough units that have huge amounts of build capacity and are deadly in large amounts i just think there needs to be some kind of moderating factor i don't know what that should be whether it should be uh cost you some kind of penalty some energy penalty to or something to keep them running maybe that doesn't work maybe you could buff them a bit up to like just a little bit less than an acu but limit the number you can have gated in at a time like up to five or something like that just something to adjust it of course, feel free to slam me if you think I'm wrong in the comments below. You know, don't hold back. Give me your true feelings because ultimately the most two most important things are A, you know, we have a healthy debate and B, I get lots of comments. So it helps my YouTube algorithm. <laughs> That's shameless. So promotion, as always, right. Enough of that. As we said, it's going to be an epic and it's going to be on sentence because apparently sentence players are people to in the loosest possible sense i'm ready you guys are ready and the players are sure as hell ready so let's go on over to the game zone and see how they go to get on Chang -ka -chang. instant loading that's what we like to see this is team one up here at the top this is team two down here at the bottom going first for team one in rear guard air position as i just rearrange one or two things on my desk terribly unprofessional all done already uh there we go let's take a look up here we have crush going seraphim there in halley orange orange Opening first land down at the cliffs down here in Pontiff White. We have Nathan, spiky space socialist today, going first and second air. Early transports out to him, wanting to make sure he bags that island down there, no doubt. Over to the causeway. It's none other than our firm fan favorite. It's Chief Jaguar, another Cybrin in regal purple this time, going first land and last for Team 1 over here in mellow yellow. It's Box. Our first Aeon of the day. So two Cybrin, an Aeon and a Seraphim there for Team 1. Taking a look at Team 2. Rearguard air position first of all in Dijon yellow or whatever that is. Just revolting colour. It's Mr. Love Birch. Of course we know Birch the sexiest of all the trees. And there he is. It's another Cybrin. Interesting choice there for an air player and going first land. Uh, up over to the cliffs for Team 2 in Baby Pink. It's UD, another Cybrin, very popular, popular today. Going first land, going second air. Over to the causeway next. Uh, featured in last week's game, our first UEF of the day. It's Epic Benis in Ferrari Red. And he went first and second land. And last but not least for Team 2 and all of the players over at the beach down here in the south. Another Aeon in electric blue. It's Dean S or Deans. And he's going to be going first land and then second and third air. That concludes our call-ins for the day. And game quality is at 94%. Nice and balanced for today. And uh, it is an all-pro affair today. No Joes to be seen, which is, uh, well, I suppose, relatively exciting after the debacle of last week. Out come the initial scouts. We've got a couple of land scouts pushing out south, uh, westerly direction there from Box over that northern river. And one single solitary air scout out from Nathan, who uh, imagine we'll be going for a transport reasonably soon. Not yet. I will uh, defer to him. He will know uh, the timing on that much better than I. Epic Benis nearly at the uh, the mass point in the center, but a Chief Jaguar already there, more or less. Epic Benis does stop 
and uh, grab the kill. Where is the wreck, though? He must have hoovered it up straight away. No hanging about there for him. Achieve Jaguar gets stuck into the closest Salem wreck to him on that causeway. Starts hoovering that up. Ep Epic Ben is going to start on the land vehicles. I just a feeling that Achieve Jaguar is going to come out on top on the mass side of things. He did get there first, but we'll check back in in just a second to see how that works out. Already making landfall. Meanwhile, on the western side island there is Yudi dropping off three engineers before retracting his skyhook there. Taking a look over at the right, we just see uh, time for landfall for Nathan, who uh, drops off three engines as well and starts work on a land factory. That's been scouted there by uh, Deans. And uh, we've got Interceptors covering that path initially for UD up at that side island, but moving back towards the center. Epic Benis starts work immediately, uh, immediately on that southwesterly Salem wreck. Chief Jaguar picked up his wreck and then moved into the center. And I have heard anecdotally that it makes more efficient sense to go after the ground wrecks first before the Salem's. You can see there's still one Salem left, the middle one. Chief Jaguar taking a little bit of fire from the Lobos over here. Not too concerned about avoiding all of the incoming fire. Of course, as soon as I say it, he goes up. Don't want to take that shell and move off over towards the east slightly. He's got a decent amount of spam up here. He's amassing troops, will no doubt send it in once he gets to critical mass where are we at now on the reclaim for these two guys as they start going toe to toe com to com achieve jaguar so far on reclaim has scooped 5.6k epic bennett's on 5.4k so there's not a great deal of daylight between the two players Bomber over the mid there from UD harassing that Mantis spam belonging to Achieve Jaguar. Or the defending interceptors, here they come, swooping in from both sides. Will they get another bomb away? No, it won't. Achieve Jaguar into the yellow now. 7,400 hit points there. Epic Venice looking very comfortable indeed and uh, will manage to grab the rest of that mass I believe has already got an engineer up assisting him further up the causeway but if he can pin Jaguar back here he'll be able to scoop all of these wrecks and get that third Salem so that is decent income for his team a nice early win there for team two epic Benis 2000 rated player achieved Jaguar 2400 but remember there is an advantage to uh, going UEF on com on com you've got that base 10,000 hit points on Cybercom versus the 12,000, so it's a pretty significant early advantage UEF gets in tankiness, faction diversity, a thing in SOCCOM for newbies, if you weren't aware. You could be forgiven for thinking they're all relatively similar, but there's definitely a difference between them all. They have their strengths and weaknesses. Solid air engagement win over the top of that central causeway for UD from Team 2. And now we've got bombers from Box harassing the spam for Epic Benis, who manages to take down that land factory belonging to Jaguar before withdrawing. <clears throat> Jaguar scoops up the mass. Going to rebuild that mass extractor that that land factory was linked to. Early, early pressure in the Southern Ocean, meanwhile, from Deans, looking to try and dislodge Nathan from his side island. Nathan selected that location for one of his naval factories. He's already producing frigates out of there, so unless there's a huge horde of submarines heading that way, which doesn't seem to be, I don't think they're going to manage to dislodge Nathan from that position Epic Venice now satisfied with his play so far is going to withdraw slightly further down the causeway 
So reclaim, where do we get to? Achieve Jaguar was on 7.4k, Epic Venice on 10k. So you can really see the difference that winning that initial exchange brings you. I wonder how much of that spilled over into his team coffers or how much he managed to spend himself. There definitely seems to be a disparity in T1 land spam between the two. Let's take a quick look. In fact, we're already seeing T2, though, on the field for Achieve Jaguar. So that will skew it slightly. But uh, just to check out basic T1 numbers in this area of the field for the two Causeway players. 43 units there for Achieved Jaguar. And for Epic Venice, in terms of strikers, he's got 93. So literally double the amount. But then, of course, we've had an upgrade, a tech upgrade from Achieved Jaguar. And Epic Venice got the lion's share of the mass in the middle stopping there to get an upgrade what was it it's gun and damage so he's going for the zef amp on board that uef chassis starting a triad as well got a radar targeting slightly off today chief jaguar still unupgraded so is this going to give Epic Benis, the impetus he feels he needs to continue to advance. Well, window for that is closing as we start to see T2 emplacements going up back here for Achieve Jaguar. Cerberus turrets, of course, not the greatest of T2 point defense. It's actually very difficult matchup for Achieve Jaguar. Early game, Causeway versus a UEF when you're a Cybran player. Not uh, the best position to make hay with your racial advantages. Bombers from Epic Venice dealt with in short order there by defending Interceptors from Box. Nice coverage on that front. And what have we got here? A few Mercies lurking from Deans just looking for an opportunity to strike at Achieve Jaguar it's com over here. I can't remember how many mercies you need. You need like six mercies for an unupgraded com, something like that. The problem being, of course, such a big map on 20 by 20, you're bringing them all the way in from over here. Guided missiles, the mercies have such a short flight range. You see how low they are on fuel already. Can't do much repositioning. You use that up, he would literally get one shot. And what are we talking about in terms of anti-air around here? Well, I can't see a great deal. But I think he needs more than that anyway. And I don't see more incoming. So I think it was like five or six for an unupgraded, unvetted commando. It was like six mercies? Maybe it was seven. I don't know. Answers on a postcard if you know the answer to that one, guys. Someone to look it up on a database. Compare with a cyber incom. Ouch for mass down and out. Now we're seeing these Vipers brought in by Chief Jaguar looking to utilize some range standoff tactics. Let's take a look at the two ponds and what's happening there now. Box over here. Nine frigates for him facing off against UD who's got 13 but they're all spread out a long way from any potential engagement. And what do we have? We've got like eight down here for Deans and uh, substantially more overall for Nathan. Larger commitment on the naval side of him from him. 17 frigates there from Nathan. So potentially a large mismatch in favor of Team 1 in the Southern Pond. Slight mismatch in favor of Team 2 in the Northern one. No major naval engagement threatening to break out anytime soon, however. Stealth and gun upgrades complete on Achieve Jaguar's commander. I don't know what happened to those mercies, but they've gone down. Epic Benis strolling in with his Zef Amp. Oh, and some Mongoose as well. Achieve Jaguar won't want to stand there and take too much of that. Look at that. Just getting beaten on. In come the rocket barrages from the Mongoose. Achieve Jaguar needs to get underwater and do it quick. He just manages it. 1,400 hit points left. Whew, that was a close one. But no early eviction.
from this one 14 minutes into the game. We were still running at plus one. I think we can afford to drop that back ever so slightly. I thought that 14 minutes had come around quickly. T2 upgrade on the way for Deans. 80% done there. It's happening over here in Yudi's base. Busy recycling his T2 power generators. He's got iron reactors up and running now. Or a or an ion reactor. Mr. Love Birch chilling back here in his horrible colour scheme with his dreadful neo-gothic outfit. That's just a fashion travesty all day. Busy pumping out ASFs now. Where are we at on that side of things? Mr. Love Birch with 20 ASFs now out and in service, his mirror up here, Crush, with 22. So, ever so slightly ahead, but nothing you'd want to write home about. Epic Benis. Took a bit of a battering, actually, in that last one. Yes, he nearly got a kill on a cheap Jaguar, but he's only sitting at about 60% health himself. 7,300 hit points there. One solitary viper causing a nuisance and a ruckus. Lobbing in uh, mobile missiles into the forward power shield up front. Buzz kills effectively dealing with those though before they impact. Neither player wanting to make their move yet in the top pond. We're still operating at T1 across the board, naval wise, therefore, box. Any naval upgrades on the way? In fact, lots of paused factories over here. I don't see any naval headquarters under construction yet. And we're not yet there yet either for Nathan. T2 upgrade complete there for a Chief Jaguar. That will restore some HP. Still looking pretty peaky though at 5,800 HP. Loitering under his shield gen. Ras done for Crush. Going straight for a Ras. Let's just take a look. Uh, generated Eco where the teams are at. And at first glance that looks pretty significant. Team 1 on 819. But I think that was re reclaim related as that drops back into the 700s it must have been hoovering up something so it actually looks like team two might be ahead on some kind of consistent basis hard to tell exactly but changes to and fro it's in that phase where lots of upgrades are going on all over the place people potentially power locking themselves out all over the shop and that will be affecting the values a cheeky little mongoose drop in from Epic Venice into the side island belonging to Nathan though that's a lovely bit of work these engineers are going to get creamed they do get some reclaim orders off they've taken down one mongoose Uh, team 1 really needed some gunships or something to deal with that. Anything on the way? Don't see any land or air factories around <laughs> for Nathan. It's like he recycled them all. Sticking just with Navy. Just got these land factories here and one at the beach over at the mainland. He's now pumping out labs to try and counter these assault bots or gatling bots rather quite a few engineers still coming for them more labs underway so these mongoose won't be able to relax yet and just start going after the resourcing options rocket barrages on that bottom set just smashing that bottom mechs As 
that is an, a major annoyance for Nathan. I don't know what is. There goes the T2. More labs inbound. They get dealt with pretty quickly. That T3 is the real gem. That's what they want to go for. And now we're starting to see gunships being produced by Crush, no doubt, to try and deal with that issue on the side island. ASF sent in to screen. Nathan, at the moment, is on 381. And even with having lost that T2 mech, he looks like chip leader. Engineers managed to throw down a T1PD over here at some point. That's taken down another mongoose, so we're down to three over here. And there goes the T3 Max. But still Nathan up on 381, looking pretty healthy overall, so it actually hasn't set him back that much. Solid eco start from Nathan. He stripped everything out of his base, every non-essential asset. He's just got power and mass and an SMD. Now gunships will finish that off. So that could have been worse than it was. He's still got two operational mechs over here. Yes, he killed a lot of engineers. He killed a lot of other stuff around. He placed a couple of mechs, killed a lot of labs. But ultimately, that hasn't ousted Nathan from the side on that drop. At best, it was a small annoyance slash inconvenience. Another drop on the way from Epic Venice, who uh, now... Uh, she's not a combat drop at all. Where is he heading over here? He's got engineers on board. Is there some kind of sneak operation to the top left? Or is he going to try and get it off map and drop it in over here? Looks like it. Actually, the drop-off point looks like it might be right there next to all these engineers so maybe that's a quick engineer drop and a quick t1 pd build at the cliffs have to wait and see now permanent static shield up at the front line for epic Venice. t2 radar underneath it lots of tactical missile defense and now spam moving up to cover it Really needs to get in some solid defences. Make that a proper firebase right in the middle. Maybe throw down some clink hammers as well. Create a little bit more breathing room. There go the engineers, but that was spotted well in advance. The Aeon engineers lying in wait have thrown down lots of T1 PD and the Sparkies, tanky as they are for engineers, just couldn't get the job done there. In fact... Even the transport got shot down by air coverage. So, all in all, not much more than a little mass gift for Team 1. But you've got to try. First drop over here definitely achieved some success. Second one, not so much. Need the team now. It seems rushing into conflict anytime. Both sides happy to eco. Rats upgrade on the way for Chief Jaguar. Flying up. Must have had decent reserves stored up there. And UD has now overtaken Nathan. He's up on 565. Gunships brought into the middle, and this is the problem with that firebase. Distinct lack. <clears throat> of anti-air capabilities interesting they flew straight over and they're heading down further let's take a quick look at fighter asf coverage what have we got here 118 on this side of the map compare that to mr love birch 96 there's a definite advantage there the gunships are going in after the t3 mechs over here and there's some vulnerable generators here too 
fighters waiting nearby. They're going to bag the T2 power plants. He's got one. He's going straight on to the next one. The fighters merge and go for it. Gunship still wailing away on the generator. They're going to pick up that kill. And that engage should pan temporary air dominance over towards Team 1. Numbers play their part. The engage was pretty equal. All of the gunships bar one so far have been shot down, but that's a great exchange, I think, for Team 1. Epic Benis loses a T3 mechs and two T2 power generators. Now they're flying deeper into Team 2's territory. Picking off vulnerable ASFs that are in smaller numbers as they can find them. They're going to full-on hang out above Mr. Love Birch's base. Certainly looks that way. Some forward pressure from what looks to be a pretty sizable band of hoplites lobbing their rockets in towards that firebase. Not much of a firebase, really. It was a defensive base against attack missiles and mobile missile launcher missiles only. Buzz kills are all destroyed, shields down. Definitely should roll forward and take out that radar. Try and blind Team 1 just a little bit. You can see on the minimap there in that bottom ocean, a couple of battleships, one out from each side from Deans and from Nathan. In fact, Nathan looks like he's got three or four of them. And up come the Percivals on the causeway there from Benis. And the Hoplites withdraw how very sensible of them to do so now would you look at that so Nathan who's up on 536 admittedly behind UD in generated eco but in second place in that all important cliffs position most lucrative on the map it would seem Nathan has managed to gather six battleships so far. Six galaxy class ships. And what are we looking at defense wise for Dean? Well, he's got two omens. Quite a lot of T2 in there. So a slightly different unit mix. A couple of Vespers going in on the T1 naval spam. And uh, a few extra entries as well. So Team 1 making a play for the Southern Pond in a big way. Not content with engaging only in his own pond up here at the top box has migrated over and thrown down a couple in fact he's going for three naval yards two of them at t2 already and a chief jaguar also getting his feet wet in the bay over here has gone straight for t3 so this is going to be a massive amount of pressure in the southern pond that's going to be brought to bear on deans pretty soon and we're also seeing air pressure being applied to these naval units as well. Massive amount of torp bombers brought in from Box being given coverage by their air player Crush who achieved air dominance obviously in that last engagement against Birch. Birch seems to have recovered somewhat though. Turns on stealth in his Cybran ASFs and surely wants to think about going in soon 
Dean's going to need all of the help he can get with what's building up against him on this side of the map. It's an interesting position. I mean, it's the easier position because the cliffs have the stronger placement on Settons against the beach positions. But uh, wouldn't you want to pile everything extra you could into taking out the enemy's cliffs and hope that one-on-one -on -one you get supremacy anyway from your cliff player who's already ahead? I don't know. Maybe I'm talking twaddle. They're clearly hoping to smash Deans as quickly as possible, get all of these blues out so they can redirect and focus elsewhere. Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly valid position to take as the two massive frigate fleets merge, backed up by their battleships in the background. That withdrawal from Deans says everything about what is to come, I think. It's only so far he can retreat. Shoreline very close by there in the background. Oh. Lots of people slag off Aeon Navy. It's true. The uh, slow muzzle velocity can make it easier to micro out of the way, but certainly makes for some of the prettiest engagements. Long arcing beams. Things really kicking off now in this one. Venice has joined in to support his neighbour. Got support commanders on the go going straight for an Atlantis. Just be careful that thing doesn't get stuck in, in there. It's pretty close to the shore. Now Galaxy class battleships turning up from the Chief Jaguar as well. Sounding pretty cocky in the comments there to his teammates. Should be one. Must admit, I'd be feeling pretty cock a hoot myself right now. Uh, it's interesting, actually. Box has packed up and gone home. So, having thrown down some naval yards down here, looks like he might have reclaimed and moved out. Imagine they would have been beaten down by anything. Check out the naval battle in the top pond now. Box going toe to toe with UD. It's another Aeon Cybran engagement, and it looks like it might be going the same direction, although at a slower rate. Just beautiful. Look at it. Battleships sitting at the back, blasting what they can. Need to try and stay away from the horde of frigates, though, which is trying to push its way through the centre. 
support commanders up here spamming out new T1 factories back over to the middle. Let's do another ASF count. Crush at 222 with fuel. And Birch on 196. So not a huge amount of difference there. One good engage will be all it'll take to pull a win out there from either player. It's just bedlam. Look at the mini-map right now. It's actually pretty rare to see so much of the map in flames at once. But Team 2 right up against the wall here. We've got a Tempest under construction at the background there for Team 2. We'll see if that will help alleviate the pressure in this bottom pond. The Chief Jaguar. Not sure what he's referring to. Cybran ACU or SCU, sorry. Trying to spam up torpedo launchers. Needs to get some harms down here. That will really help them. Start spamming those up in the mid if you can afford it. Change the nature of everything. This is what I mean though. 19,000 hit points. I mean, it's huge amounts of HP it takes an absolute battering a Barracuda fleet from a cheap Jaguar working wonders at the moment for team one have really helped hold UD at bay cheap Jaguar with feet in both of these pods now. Bennis, conversely, sticking to the bottom pond and might be about to be evicted as hordes of Jaguars, Barracudas turn up and start going after his production facilities. Summit in the background there of that T3 factory just completes. I think that factory is going to drop any minute now with the amount of torpedoes colliding with it. There it goes. This is an absolute unbridled 100% shag fest. And there's that massive round from the Tempest there. Engaging some of the backgrounds in the backfield. But look at all of the battleships rolling in from Nathan. So much firepower. Coming up to 32 minutes. 33 minutes, sorry. Birch asking for Bennis's T3 NG so he can build a Mavor. Starting to talk about game enders now. It's that time. I think Team 2 certainly do need something for a momentum shift. They're completely bogged down in the top pond. Thanks to Jaguar's intervention up here. Really with these Barracudas which are doing amazing work against UD spam. It's helping to hold this tide back. UD conversely operating completely by himself in that top pond. And in the bottom one, Venice has been evicted, at least in terms of production facilities. He's got, still got a lot of engineers in here. They're rolling in here to try and scoop up some of this mass, no doubt. And he's got these support commands now, which are producing harms. If you get enough of those online, that could be very tricky for Team 1 as they try to move in and oust Deans. But down goes the Tempest. And that's the problem. 
They're wonderful units, but as very expensive, simple last stand units right at the back, they make a very big target for large fleets of battleships to home in on. Dean's engineers immediately move in to start trying to get as much out of that loss as possible. Suck up that mass once again. So total mass accrued now, 2.34 million there for Team 2, as opposed to 2.8, 2.09 million, sorry, for Team 1. So actually Team 2's scooped more mass over the course of this game, but how much of it is re-scooping, reclaimed from their own destroyed units? That's the question. That can be the misleading factor in all of this. So many naval yards. Now, look at all the naval yard wrecks. Are they all Benesses? They're all UEF wrecks. Can't actually select them anymore. Think of that. Must be. There's no one else around. It's the only UEF on the map, so <laughs> nobody else is. Badly damaged naval yard in the back. Just on fire. But hats off to a cheap Jaguar who is helping Box hold out here. And he's got support commanders in here doing exactly the right thing. He's got four harms, sorry, in the center there. That's so much torpedo power. He's building more all the time. The more of those that go up, the harder it's going to be for Yudi to win this pond and the way things are going in the bottom pond it's vital that he does he has to do something to try and dislodge to break this wall and right now it almost seems as if it's moving in the other direction just wolf packs of barracudas no end of trouble going pop somewhere I think 35 minutes in so, uh, ACU seem to have departed and there it goes so we've been waiting for it to start and this is a multi team member project for team 2 as Dean's got SCUs in there it's been built in Birch's base with his assistance and a whole horde of T1 engineers from Venice making their way in to try and get this thing up and running ASAP and they need something because frankly right now it's not going well for Team 2. It says they've pulled in more mass but they haven't got the territory to show it for, them, for it and it's uh, moving certainly in the wrong direction. Ben is trying to get as many harms online down here next to the coastline as possible. It's almost like it's not having any real effect just relentless expansion and pressure moving southwesterly in that bottom pond from team one Yudi still making a go of it up here let's compare battleship numbers so we can really see what we're looking at here 11 battleships for UD boxes omens it's only got four omens versus those 11 galaxy class battleships and uh, no battleships up there for a chief jaguar at all but those barracudas and the harms are doing amazing work potential weak point down here though those four harms creates a reef of mayhem trying to break their way forward mind you some solid ground fire from some of those battleships dealing with them nicely wonder what's going on there the battleships can't target them directly but they can ground fire above them and the area of effect on the 
Galaxy-class battleships is such that Shockwave still manages to damage them. So Han's not safe at that depth from the battleships. And that is going to be the saving grace potentially for UD. And by contrast, of course, down here is these harms struggling to contain the pressure from Team 1 in the bottom pond. Tension now being switched and these harms are stacked right on top of each other which is going to make that even worse. Battleships need to shift their ground fire now. One harm's down. Another six to go. That looks like it for Deans. He's evacuating resources out west. He's already lost all of his core mass and his main base. Bennis has rolled in with a support commander and is helping to cannibalize what's left. He's thrown down some T1 mexes in that core base. But ultimately, that is not a, an area of contention anymore. That is just a loss for Team 2. What isn't a loss is the progress on this Mavor, which is in the green. It's at 6,900 hit points out of 8,000. That is very nearly done. What are we looking at for game enders from Team 2? Team 1, sorry. Doubt there'll be any at the causeway. They're looking pretty light. There is a Paragon on the way over here and that's nearly in the green that's nearly at 75 percent done it's going to tick over any minute there it goes that's being produced by nathan with the help of crush so that's our major target of opportunity for that mavor the question is have team two scouted it not yet they've got some radar imaging We've got air spy planes over here they just need to Get the read on it over here. Get one good flyby. And they'll recognize the danger. But team one in the top pond. Crumbling now. UD definitely on the warpath. Bad news for team one. Good news for team two. Good news for us. The game will be prolonged. Progress has been made in the bottom pond now being offset, albeit at a slower rate, admittedly, over in the top. Maver online, erection of doom, lines up. And fires its mighty load. At some point. Niagara not doing the trick like it used to. There it goes. I always love the spiral effect too. It's always one of my favorite things about it. Engineers switching up now to some extra nuke defense. Priority will now be to keep that thing online and alive. Lots of shield gens going up around that soon to be completed Paragon though. And that's going to be absolutely huge. There it goes. Nathan has unlimited resources now and needs to get to work on building more of those for his teammates all about the place. I only just realized actually everything has been transferred over. Crush has given everything to Nathan. I'm wondering if uh, he had to go somewhere. Sending everything over lots and lots of conversation happening all the time it's always annoyed me actually that the chat bar resets when every time someone puts something new in so unfortunately can't find that out to you for you guys but answer in the comment section below if you caught that earlier on in the cast what's uh, crush up to is it that time of the week where he has to take his weekly poo that indeed has been spotted Paragon has been spotted and that's going to be incredibly difficult now 
to keep that Mavor out of there. Scathis being hurriedly produced by Nathan. Trying to capitalize on that Paragon. And it is a race to see how quickly the build capacity can spam up more shield gens. There's a lot of build capacity there. Oh, a few shields go down. And in fact, they've had to pull the support commanders off the Scathis production and onto shield coverage to try and protect that Paragon. And that now anchors, essentially, the Mavor to that target. They need to take that out. That's not even an option. Scath is under construction for Bennis, not too far away from the Mavor. Oh my god! Oh my goodness me. So Mr. Birch went for a telemazer and didn't get it. He didn't get it. I don't believe it. The Paragon took a little bit of damage, but not a lot. And it's not taken enough off the shields to let the Mavor through either. That is brutal. So UD now in command of all of his teammates. Mr. Birch, Mr. Love Birch. His stuff, his air production. And in fact, the Mavor is switching up and going after the main base over at the cliffs. Formerly belonging to Nathan, all of the resourcing options typically always happens, of course, once you get the Mavor transferred over to teammates. That's gone over to Box. But for how long? I think that was a wise decision. I don't think they were going to break through that Mavor shielding. I can't believe that Telemazer didn't work. Was it all the support commands? I'm not seeing a huge amount. Banks of T1... PDs. Answers on the comment section if you saw that one as well earlier. Wasn't focusing in on it. Absolutely enormous. Teleporter on the way for Crush. So I'm guessing he's com contemplating some kind of tele-suicide being as he's not got anything else going on. He's transferred everything over to his teammates. See now everything's getting shielded in a real hurry. So taking a look at the rest of the game now, rather than just the standoff side of things. Chief Jaguar and Nathan properly ousting Deans from his main base. He's had to drop back. Deans does have support commanders though. So we'll be transferring his economy over to those by pumping out as many as he can. Strategic launch detected. And there's our first nuke of the game coming out back from Nathan. It's a lot of arse. Oh my goodness me. So with unlimited resources. Oh, and it gets taken out immediately by a Mavor shell, but too late. Where is that going? We so rarely see one of these emerge. It's on its way. It could be anything on the line between the back base or Bennis up at the front. Remember, it takes two anti-nuke missiles to shoot those puppies down. Just awesome. I can't believe it went down so quickly. Of course, he'll be spamming them out elsewhere. Look at all of the engineers just flinging another one up at the back. But let's check in what the missile's doing. One anti-nuke, two anti-nuke, and there it goes. A 
Look at all of the galaxy shells tearing into Bennis's position. And that whole causeway position will become untenable now as the battleships move in to flank the edge of this. Nathan spitting out ASFs now. He'll be able to produce in great number. He's got He's operating, though, essentially it's pretty difficult because Crush is still in this, so Nathan is still operating off 1.5k. Crush taking up 1.5k unit cap. So, unlike UD, that has two players unit cap because his teammate's gone out, Nathan is hampered somewhat by the amount of stuff that he can spam out. Mavor switching. Oh my goodness me, that's so many dead support commanders. It's the most dead actual people in SOPCOM in one blow. <laughs> like ever, except of course when they all blow up at the end of a game. But from a single shell. Most units, of course, in the lore of SOPCOM all mere robots but the support commanders meant to be actual people and here come the gender confused naughty naughty walkie walkie in from UD not content with ousting box his naval base and his central main base is now gonna send that naval incursion inland and there's a lot of un unprotected power plants in the background there somewhere they should be trying to build a second para it's another Yolana Os under construction over this way and another one up there the plan is to just irradiate them into the dust T1 unit spam from Box trying to slow him down but Box is actually out front with his commander have they recognized that that's the danger right there those Salem's need to focus in on that he got a ranking upgrade right now but he's just tearing them apart with overcharge check out the giant titanium shinies on this guy so manly so utterly manly. Huge man crush on box right now. <laughs> An entire Salem fleet just obliterated with that ACU. That was a thing of Strategic beauty. Absolute beauty. Crab over there in the center. That's now getting pumped out by support commanders over here from a Chief Jaguar. Is that another Yolana Os? Yes, it is. Another one under construction. This one up here must be nearly done. Remember, they have a ridiculously fast recharge rate. He's just spamming them up everywhere right now. How on earth are Team 2 going to contend with this? Yes, they still have the Mavor, but they can't penetrate the shields with the Mavor. And now they have rapid fire artillery coming in from somewhere. I don't exactly know where they've staged it. And soon a Scathis is to complete in the center. Just don't know what Team 2 can use against this kind of firepower. A huge strap on rush on the Mavel would be good right now, but The Myrmidons is being flung up to try and deal with them. Stealth is activated. They're flying past a whole load of Myrmidons down here. How many of these strats will get through? Has the Mavel been retargeted over here? But Box gets picked off on the center right over here by all of these galaxies. His game, as far as he's concerned, was effectively over. But we've got to check back in on here. These strat bonds, they have to take this power out. Interesting, they're going after the SMDs. 
not the para. They haven't broken through enough shields to go for the para anyway. There's still one, two, three, four or so of them alive. This is where they needed to coordinate. There should be Mavor shells raining in, but they haven't got it anymore. That's why it got taken out by the rapid fire artillery. Oh my word. They just can't get ahead. Strategic Any of those launch, strats detected. still alive? Don't think so. And now more nukes heading southwest Strategic from Team launch, One. Detected. Oh my god, they've got Scathish shells just peppering the area. Surely that's it. 47 minutes, that's got to be it. Stacked up couple of nukes heading across the board from the subs over here from UD. That's why he was going after all of the anti-nukes over here. One, two, there's so many anti- Oh my goodness me. Wow, so many nukes in there. Oh my god, one skipped through. One has got through. They've got a Jaguar as well. It's right next to it. Boom! They got- Oh my god, that's the nuke barrage of the century. So Jaguar is out. That's insane. Is it these guys? Seeing any kills on them. Must have been these guys. Unless he's got another group further in here. That seems a bit long range. No, it's these guys over here. 34 kills. And that changes a thing or two. But surely what's the difference though? Look at what's raining down at the back here. Crushes over here. All by his lonesome out in front. Is he left? I'm guessing he's left, but as in gone AFK, not left left. If they can take out Nathan, that's it though. Where is Nathan's com? down here in that typical oh so typical ACU hiding spot in the pond at the edge of the map Strategic oh, launch just detected. jazzing about that nuke barrage how many nukes were in that and they were right on top of each other as well just insane another Yolana Os missile out all the shield gens are down now this is a problem can Nathan keep up with the demands for his power? No, he can't. They take a huge quantity of power for Yolana Oss, and now he's got like three of them. Strategic launch detected. Another nuke out. Where's that from? Right, that's coming from the submarines on the centre causeway, formerly belonging to a Chief Jaguar. This should make a pretty big explosion. This is the first Yolana Os that we're likely to see land. Well, that's if it will. Uh, it probably won't even land, actually. It's going to get shot down. Oh, would it be a shame if we don't actually get to see one land? Kind of would. But that one is... Oh, tasty! And that's the forerunner base to all the goodies at the back. Well, I say goodies that are left. This whole area has been pretty solidly bombarded. To their credit, though, look. Strategic launch detected. Mavor, 50% done. Scath is 50% done. Comprehensive shield cover still alive. Nuke out there from the back there from Bennis and another Yolana Os. This time it looks like it's going over towards that western side island over here. Killing things just for the lulz. He'll grab a few Strategic support commanders in detected. there and all of those T3 navels. Assuming that connects, I think it might. Oh, cheeky. Look at that. Deans with a naughty little TAC missile base. Launching in TAC missiles at resourcing options further into Team 1's territory. Oh, that actually dropped short. He's going after UD's Navy, hoping no doubt to take out some of those piles of nuke subs. I thought that was going further left. Apologies for that. That would have been good to, to watch. Not actually seeing many more nuke subs over there. Now, Nathan, this is just like Sopcom head overload now. You're trying to manage all of this and get your eco 
back into some kind of balance with all of the strains and demands Strategic that are on your power grid detected. right there. Strategic that's a, that's detected. another stacked launch. I can't tell you how many missiles are in there. But it's going to be a lot. Those subs stacked right on top of each other. I don't even know how they do that. Answers in the comments if you know how they do that. Another missile flying past overhead. Crush is still alive and moving. He's down there moving out west. But that's going to... One is through. Another one's down. How many missiles are left? Boom! Where's Nathan? Where was Nathan? Nathan's down here. That landed, so that's a bunch. That's two or three of the Yolana Oss out. He's got another one over here. He said, I had SMD. Yeah, you did, but that was a lot of missiles, my friend. It looked like one because they were so stacked, so close together. One missile out. Another one's not forthcoming. That's going to connect. Side Island is history, along with just about everything else. Got to love those explosions in fact those T3 factories or some of them surviving that outer ring explosion and now a Scathis has been completed right at the back Strategic now launch detected. another nuke out going after the other Strategic Yolana Os is this another How? oh my god how is he doing this he's got so many nukes strategic launch detected absolutely insane the Scathis is online back here another nuke from the top is inbound I'm not sure if we've got any nukes to shoot that down let's check back in on what's going to happen over here this is absolutely crucial uh, the Yolana, Yolana Os over here survives but would you look at what's coming their way Mavor's up from says UD Hellfire raining down on this region of the map. Can they sneak? Can Nathan sneak one of his super nukes into the backfield there and put this game to bed? If he can land it and take out the Scathis and the Mavor, surely that's game. Surely. But one anti nuke missile has already hit. I need one more. But Nathan's been defeated by UD. Up at the back. Or was it a control K? I don't know. Answers on the comment section. That was ridiculous. That was absolutely ridiculous. And that super nuke did get shot down in the end. Absolutely insane. Uh, all that's left is Crush. Still wandering around. I'm still not sure why he bowed out of the game and gave everything over to his teammates. Just wow, though. I can't believe Team 2 won it. 53 minutes. Look at what was coming, though, their way. It was absolutely insane. I can't believe Team 1 lost that from where they were at. Just going back over to see if there's some kind of... Uh, they had the recrimination starting. Imagine being an air player that didn't... Well, you know, come on. Come on. No, there's no... It might have been a control K. It did pop up that uh, he'd been popped by... I think it was UD, but uh, I'm not sure if he was nuked. That could have been a nuke coming over. Answers in the comment section again, guys. If you, saw it. you guys are going to be talking in the comment section a lot, but that's fine, as we said. It's good for my algorithm. But definitely MVP UD. That was just utterly insane i hope you enjoyed it guys there's always more to come from me in the future don't forget patreon still alive and well subscribe if you want to help me out and the channel by extension the community huge huge thanks to everybody that donates i also need more replays guys i'm having to really scour the pan to get replays up these days not so many incoming so if you've wanted to get casted now might be your chance like i say because i'm light so do send them my way please um don't give me any Thermopylae maps. I'm not a huge fan on the... Uh, oh, what's the big one that's the, the, with the water in the, the second of the tea? So I don't know. The, the, the sort of... Um, 
I, I don't even know. Brain's gone after I've got true Sopcom head after watching that. It was just insane. But uh, anyway, until next time, guys, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.